On this episode of The Briefing Room, we are talking forged versus billet. Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Today we're going to be handling a topic that is one that still comes up quite often. And I get a lot of questions about this, particularly from new owners or new builders of the AR-15 platform. And that is, which type of lower receiver should I get? Forged versus billet. Now, truth be told, there are quality examples of each type on the market today. And I have just a couple of samples here. I have a traditional regular forged lower. This is from a quality manufacturer and it is just a great example of just a good forged lower receiver. Now also I have something a little bit higher on the scale and this is from Ascend Army. This is a billet lower receiver and then I kind of have something that isn't necessarily new to the market but something that a lot of people don't know about and that is a forged receiver that has some of the features and looks of a billet receiver. So we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons of all these different types and kind of give you a little bit of background. So before we begin talking about these specific lowers, let's talk about the background. What is a forged lower receiver? The forged lower receiver, like the one shown here, starts its life from a forging, hence the name forged. And for those of you guys that don't know much about machining and forging processes, basically what a forging is, is there's a few different forge houses out there and they take aluminum, usually 70, 75. Uh, there are a few 60, 61 receivers out there that uh, quite frankly didn't really you know, pass the market standard. So most of them that you're gonna find now are 70, 75. But basically what they do is they take this aluminum and they forge it into a shape. And in this case, it's the shape of the lower receiver. So a raw forging looks like a lower receiver without any machining or any cutting done to it. It has the external dimensions of the lower receiver and it is raw aluminum. So then what the various manufacturers out on the market do is they will start to do all of the final machining. So they will cut the magazine well, cut the various pockets for your fire control group, your bolt catch, they'll drill and ream holes, they will cut uh, the receiver extension threads, they'll put all the pockets in, all the threads, everything that's basically needed to do final machining to our receiver to get it what it is today. And then of course they will finish it in some sort of an anodized finish such as a mil spec anodized finish like the one that is shown here. Now what is the difference? A lot of people say well a lower is a lower is a lower is a lower and quite frankly that's just not true. Now yes the forgings may all come from just a few different places but it's what is done with that forging that makes the difference. So for example you know we could get diamonds from the same diamond mine, but it's how they are cut, how they are polished that makes the difference between diamond A versus B and C. And that's the same thing with lower receivers. You'll see some lower receivers that are as little as $30 or $40, $50, and you'll see other lower receivers that are $100, $150. And what is the difference is the machining time, how tight and how critical they are holding their tolerances, how they are cutting, how they are manufacturing this from a forging into an actual lower receiver. And generally the more expensive the lower, if it's from a reputable company, it will have a maybe things like a flared magwell, uh, it will have enhancements, it'll have true cut threads versus just tap threads. And the, again, the tolerances are gonna be very tight. So the holes are of proper size because they were drilled and reamed to size versus just a drilled. The magazine well may be wire EDM cut. Uh, you know, there's different enhancements that manufacturing processes add up with money because it's time on the machine, but it makes for a better lower receiver. So that is in a nutshell, a forged lower receiver and they look just like you could see here. Now let's talk about a billet lower receiver like the one shown here from Ascend Armory. Now billet does not start off with a forged shape of the external dimension. It basically starts out as a big block of aluminum. And again, based on the manufacturer, there are 6061 or 7075 aluminum receivers out there. But what's nice with the billet receiver is it essentially is a blank canvas. We don't have to worry about, you know, keeping certain external dimensions because they came that way, i.e. the forged, you know, the, uh, the forged lower, this one right here, 
they can you know have a lot more creativity now a lot of the billet receivers on the market uh, especially during you know some of the peak times were very square and block like because it costs time and money to machine rounded corners and do extra time to smooth things out but what's really cool about billet is you have a blank slate and you can get some really amazing features like some of the features here we have an incredibly enlarged and open magwell we have an integrated trigger guard we have very, very tight tolerances, and just the aesthetic looks of this, uh, it's just amazing. Plus, again, we have features such as the custom fire control group pins, uh, ambidextrous bolt catch, bolt release. You know, so there's just a lot of options with the billet that they can really do a lot to enhance not only the look, but also the performance of the receiver by adding some extra controls or some extra ergonomic things like that because they're starting from that, that blank slate. Now there is another type of lower receiver that is introducing itself to the market, and that is a forged lower receiver with more billet looks and features. So this company here, uh, Aero Precision, came out with this particular lower, and this is actually a forged lower, which means it came from that forged Forging, that piece that had the external dimensions. So what Aero did is they said, hey, we want our own forged lower that has a unique look but has also enhancements that the user will benefit from but still maintaining the strength and being you know, attractively priced as a forged lower receiver. So enter this lower receiver, which kind of looks like a billet lower receiver. If we compare it to a traditional forged lower. You can see there are some similarities, but then you can definitely tell there's some deviation where they did some enhancements. Now this, again, came from a forging. So they worked with a forging house and they have their own forging made to this external shape and then they did the final machining. Now what's nice with uh, their forging is they increased the size of the magazine well, so they enhanced the mouth of the magazine well. They have an integrated trigger guard here that is also enlarged compared to the standard mil spec straight trigger guard, so for those uh, in cold environments, wearing gloves, big fingers, whatever, you have more room there. And then they also increased, in my opinion, the aesthetics of it. It's a, definitely a sharp looking lower receiver, but it also has some enhancements because they were uh, you know, thinking kind of how we can enhance this overall is they decided to make a threaded bolt catch pin as well as thread here for a set screw, so that way your takedown pin uh, that spring and detent that's usually hiding under here now can be held with a set screw. So this is a very, very nice lower receiver that is priced like a forged lower because it is a forged lower, but yet it has some of the features and the looks of a billet. So which one is right for you? If we compare you know, all of them, we have the forged, we have a high-end uh, billet, and then we have a new kind of enhanced forged. And the reality is this, it kind of depends on what type of build you're looking to do. If you want more of a mil-spec looking gun, a traditional looking AR, then you're probably gonna go with a forged upper and lower set. And the nice thing is, is that generally these are priced better than the billet counterparts because there's a little less machining time. And then we also have strength. Forging is the strongest receiver because the aluminum is forged and pressed together to make that forging. It's a very, very strong piece. Uh, some metallurgy scientists out there can definitely look to the grain and the structure of the aluminum that can tell the difference. Uh, but I've never heard of a, a quality billet lower breaking or you know, having issues either. So I wouldn't necessarily worry about that if you're buying from a quality manufacturer. So if you want that kind of traditional AR look, there are some with enhanced openings, beveling of the magwell, things like that. Uh, definitely go with a forge, but if you're maybe looking for a three gun build or a higher end build or a custom build and you want it to have a certain look or you want to have those ambi uh, bolt catch, bolt release, ambi mag, you know, you want to have the enlarged magwells, you know, kind of more of an extreme type gun, then definitely you're going to want to look at billet because sometimes the tolerances can be uh, tighter too because they're taking more time to machine everything together. Or if you kind of want the best of both worlds, there are certainly options now from Aero Precision like this, and they have a matching upper receiver as well. I hope that kind of helped explain some of the differences between a forged and a billet receiver, and I hope that answered maybe some of the questions that you have moving forward for your next build. Don't ever hesitate to seek the assistance of a qualified gunsmith or armorer or someone that is an AR expert in your area if you have questions. Maybe that's a local gun shop or a gunsmith or an armorer or something like that. But uh, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. And there can be a lot of good information online as well, but then there can also be some, some bad information online too. So be cautious on where you're getting it and don't be afraid to vet that information. If you guys have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the section below. We hope this helped answer one of the common questions that we get here on the briefing room from our QA series. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day.